Well, I can remember as a kid, the White River trucks coming in and seeing those guys work. And it was, it was appealing. You know, these guys were linemen. And they, they were the guys who kept the lights on. I thought it was cool. Yeah, they were, they were big boys. Line work is, is hard work. It's good work. Um, not everybody is cut out to be a lineman. And it is physical work and challenging work. I think you can ask any lineman and they'll tell you that they really enjoy line work. To become a lineman, you have to, you have to enter into an apprenticeship. And it's a four year apprenticeship. You have to go through three years of book school and four years of on the job training. And you learn from the journeyman lineman, the other guys on the job. You cannot go anywhere and find any bunch of linemen that will work harder than these men here at White River. We, we work hard and we're proud of it. You're stuck with your relatives, family you choose. You know, and then these people are my family, they really are. When we get here in the morning, we get our work orders uh, from our foreman. Every day is something different. Some jobs may only take an hour if it's a small secondary job. Some jobs may take two months. Today we have came down to Tate Road, which is off 86 Highway. It's uh, cold this morning. It was 11 degrees actually when I left my house today. The worst part of working, like as far as the winter goes, is just the cold. Too many clothes on, gloves, uh, hands go numb, the wind that hurts your ears, you're bundled up in clothing that you can't move around as well as you normally could. Now, today we're working on this three-phase conversion. Years ago when this line was built, it was single phase. And at that time, that was sufficient. But over the years, growing, houses moving in, it could no longer carry the load to be single phase. The main reason for that conversion was so that we could break up load, reduces your outages. Sometimes it's a lot easier to climb a pole than it is to try to get a bucket truck or something in to the pole. The bucket truck would probably be safer, but we get paid to climb poles. The climbing is scary at first. When you first climb your, your first few poles and you put that belt around the pole and go to lean back and you have to trust that, that that's not going to turn loose of you. It's very alarming. I think people would lie if they said it didn't scare them the first few poles they went up. In switching these lines over there's lots of danger involved that that uh, normal people wouldn't realize. You know you look up there and you see a guy with a wire in his hand and, and you don't understand that how close to death you know he just might be. If we didn't do the upgrade and, and load begin to be a problem on this particular line, it would start causing problems as far as breakers going out and fuses and it would just be a, a big problem for White River at the substation. Probably the most enjoyable part of being a lineman is the freedom to be in a different place from day to day. We stay busy, we, we always have work. We have like 6,000 miles of line and all this line is, you know, 50 years old or older. When storms hit, if you, if you haven't done your system maintenance, then poles are old and weak, um, the trees are overgrown and, and the brush gets in the way and causes power outages. This morning when I walked into the foreman's office, he said we had a bad pole up here that we couldn't get to with our normal digger truck. So, we had to bring the track vehicle out here to set it. It could be one of the best pieces of equipment. Uh, we can get places that we couldn't get before, that we had to cut roads into. Now we can, we can take the tank down the right of way and, and get to those places to change poles out. First, we're going to uh, kill this section of line so we can go in there because we'll probably have to climb the pole, take the wire off and stuff. So we're going to cut a set of bells in, which We'll leave that part of the line hot, but kill this side, and we'll ground this side for safety purposes, and we'll be able to do this without the line being hot. It's an old pole. It split out really bad at the top and kind of lean a little bit, so you had to watch where you put your feet. It's a chore sometimes to get all these old poles out of the ground. They've been there for 50 years, so the soil is completely compacted around them. We had to wiggle it around a lot, just trying to get enough slack in the ground to let this pole come out of the ground. When we set our poles, uh, the REA has specs how deep we're supposed to set it. And it's supposed to be 10% of the pole's length plus two feet. That was 45 foot pole, so it's six and a half foot in the ground. Being a lineman is a very dangerous, very serious job. When we get to the job site, we have a, a tailgate discussion. We talk about all the safety precautions, the uh, power sources, the breakers, any safety issues are gonna be discussed at that time with everybody on the crew, make sure we're all on the same page. You have to think before you do, a lot of times and try to figure out what the problem is because you don't want to get 
four or five guys killed that's standing on the ground. You've got to have it right in your head when you're up there 40, 50 feet in the air and you're just a few inches away from over 7,000 volts. Um, you've, you've got to be constantly thinking about what's above you and trying not to think about how far it is below you and uh, trying to get a job done. The primary goal is to go home every day to your family, to your kids, and repeat that day after day. We're on our way out to a member that has called in with a tree on the secondary line. Happens quite often. Storms or consumers may have something to get away from them and tear it down. A member was cutting some trees down to clear of his barn uh, so they didn't fall on his barn and destroy it someday. And one of them had got away from him and tore our secondary down that actually goes to his house. Luckily, the sun's shining and it's in the daytime. It's not in the middle of the night. And uh, the gentleman was very helpful. We had to cut a few more limbs and stuff and got our wire fed over the top. We had to repair a little bit at the house because it tore the weather head off the house. We had to make some new connections there, run new wire from there to here, and we spliced it here in the middle. It's a good thing that the member went ahead and called us before he went further with it because he still had another tree to go the next one could have been worse. It could have actually got into our primary line. Branson to 30. 30, go ahead. Jason, we've got an outage when you're ready for it. Should be the first road on your right down K Highway. 10 4. We got this back on out here off the T, Laura, so uh, we're going to head that way. Okay. Well, as we was wrapping up, the dispatcher called, and so instead of getting to go home and see our families now, we get to go on another call. It's kind of tough sometimes working outside in the elements. When it snows, of course, uh, the roads are slick. and We still have to get out there and, and work, when, especially when there's outages. Uh, ice storms, uh, my goodness, just uh, there's some places you can't get a truck when there's an ice storm and you have to climb the pole. You're climbing an icicle. When it gets hot, it's, it's tough. When it's cold, it's tough. Um, but you get used to it. You know, you really do. There are days that are obviously nice and beautiful. And when you get a nice breeze and, you know, you're the winner that day, for sure. The members meter loop burn up earlier today. The crew that was on regular time, they had already come and disconnected it for them. They're getting it ready. They got an electrician. We're getting ready to hang them a new loop. The loop is the, uh, the members and uh, we, we service to the meter. We're going to take down this this old loop is like a 100 amp loop and uh, we're going to hang a 200 amp loop here. You can see the meter loop is burnt up one one leg, the hot side is burnt. That's the problem and uh, got a new loop and, and get the member back on get the air conditioning rolling. Whatever the members need we're on call 24 hours a day. They obviously had trouble today so we're here to fix them this afternoon. My little boy is his first t-ball game, and uh, but I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. A lot of times we miss a lot of stuff, but you know, we work to make a living for them too, so that's one reason we're here. Time for the t-ball game. I think the thing I like most working at White River is being on call. People are out of power, big storm comes through, they're, they're pretty happy to see us. Typically you're on for a seven day period and you're on for 24 hours a day. Any of the after hours, as far as overnight and weekend, you are responsible for maintaining the system. If you work all night, it's, it's still your responsibility to be here the next morning and put in a, a full eight hour day. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Jason with White River. Hi, Wayne Fry. Good to meet you, yeah. Wayne. Oh, Junior Kenny. Hi, Junior. Well, I was mowing and I heard a big boom. And this has happened several times before, a lot of squirrels. Well, squirrel or, or limbs? I'd say the tree close to squirrel. Yeah, there he is. You can see his head and his feet sticking out over oh, top yeah. of the pot. We can do a lot of stuff on the ground with this stick right here. It saves driving to somebody's yard. If it's just something as simple as a transformer fuse, we can have it refused with this stick before I can even put my climbing tools on. We're gonna put the fuse back in this pot. Another squirrel, naturally. Been up there and knocked it out. Now we're just gonna 
put the new fuse back in, it's got to be back in business. Us old uh, hill folks out here, a lot of us got deer meat in the freezers and you know, when electricity goes off like that, well in our mind we're thinking, uh oh, we don't want to lose that kind of stuff. And I mentioned it to the dispatcher and said, oh no problem, they'll be right there. It's past my dinner time, I know it's past Claude's dinner time, he eats about 5.30 and goes to bed about 7. Good news and bad news. The bad news is squirrels for supper again, for you. The good news is it's partially cooked this time. <laughs>